एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू आवर चैनल दृष्टि आई इंग्लिश माय नेम इज प्रज्ञा एंड इन टुडे इज इंटरेस्टिंग एपिसोड ऑफ एनवायरमेंट प्राइमर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट रिमेंस इन द न्यूज ऑफ एन द टाइटल ऑफ आवर टुडे इज डिस्कशन इज द कन्वेंशन ऑन इलीगल ट्रेड ऑफ इंडेंजर्ड स्पीसीज ऑफ वाइल्ड फ्लोरा एंड फोना or the sites convention in this discussion we'll firstly see what is this sites convention we are also going to analyze the working system of this convention we are also going to study about india and sites then we are also going to analyze a practice question for your prelims examination moving forward to the background of our today's topic so the parties to this sites convention have recently agreed that we need to stop the illegal trade to stop the illegal trade of parts of jaguar so this animal namely jaguar is subjected to illegal trade and poaching throughout the globe so that is why the part parties to the sites convention have agreed that yes will cooperate and will stop the illegal trade and exploitation of this jaguar and will also preserve the big cat population so this brings us to the moot question of our today's discussion that what exactly is this sites convention so the convention on international trade in endangered species of wild flora and fauna also known as the sites convention is an international agreement to which states and regional economic integration organizations adhere voluntarily okay so this convention is the only international agreement which prevents international trade of those species which are threatened okay so this is the only international agreement restricting trade in the threatened species now i'll ask if you ask me ma'am how was sites born so it the year was 1960s in 1960s we realized that yes we need to protect our natural flora and fauna which we were losing at a huge rate so in 1963 the members to the iucn sat together and brought a resolution and through this 1963 resolution sites was born the sites convention was signed on march 3 and this is observed as the world wildlife day this fact is important from the examination point of view that world wildlife day is observed on the a day on which this sites convention is signed because recently we have marked the 50th anniversary of this sites convention moving forward it came into force in 1975 and this sites convention is administered by the UNEP or the United Nations Environmental Program and the headquarter is located in Geneva Switzerland so it aims to ensure that the international trade in specimens of wild animals and plants does not threaten their survival that means the international trade of those species which are already threatened which are already on the verge of extinction is prohibited is regulated and controlled by this sites convention if you ask me ma'am what is the governing body of the sites so the governing body governing body of sites is conference of parties or cop so cop is the governing body of this sites convention and it sits every 3 years okay so it does not sit annually it sits every 3 years and this fact is also important from your examination point of view although sites is legally binding on the parties it does not take the place of national laws that means the parties can enact national laws to implement sites in fact they are bound if they ratify and sign the sites convention they are bound to implement it through their national laws moving forward let us analyze how does this convention of sites actually work so the convention of sites work on a system known as the licensing system okay 
and the sites work by subjecting international trade in specimens of selected species to certain controls, prohibitions and regulations. All import, export, re-export and introduction from the sea of species covered by the convention has to be authorized through a licensing system. In fact, each party to the convention must designate one or more management authorities in charge of administering that licensing system and one or more scientific authorities to advise them on the effects of trade on the status of the species. So, basically, if you want to trade in the species that are mentioned in the appendices of sites convention, you will have to obtain export and import licenses. And each party has to have a body known as the management authority, the scientific authority which will examine the effect of this international uh, uh, trade on the on the status of the species okay so highly threatened species are not allowed to be internationally traded moving forward let us analyze the appendices of the sites convention so there are three appendixes of the sites convention appendix 1 appendix 2 and appendix 3 so, the species which are placed in appendix 1 are the most protected, most and their trade is completely prohibited. The species which are placed in appendix 2 of the sites convention are more or less lesser protected than the appendix one species appendix that means the international trade is not prohibited but it rather it is regulated and controlled and the species which are placed by the parties in appendix 3 those parties who are already monitoring the over utilization the illegal trade of those species are placed in appendix 3 and then the parties cooperate with each other to stop their illegal trade okay so appendix 1 lists species that are most endangered among sites listed animals and plants and they are threatened with extinction and sites completely prohibits their international trade as I have explained to you apart from some purposes such as the research and development and scientific research and for that also you have to obtain license from the sites. Moving forward appendix 2 lists species that are not necessarily now threatened with extinction but that may become so unless trade is closely controlled so as i have explained to you they receive a very less protection than the appendix 1 species but their trade is uh, closely regulated monitored and controlled by the sites okay it also includes so called look alike species that is species whose specimen in trade look like those of species listed for conservation reasons. International trade in specimen of appendix 2 species may be authorized by the granting of an export permit or re-export permit certificate by the sites. Okay. So, appendix uh, 2 species uh, have lesser protection than appendix 1 species and their trade is regulated and allowed okay but you will have to obtain a export and a re-export license by the site so for that okay moving forward no import permit is necessary for appendix 2 species under sites okay permits or certificates should only be granted if the relevant authorities are satisfied that certain conditions are met above all that trade will not be detrimental to the survival of the species in the wild so all of these considerations have to be looked forward to before granting any export or uh, re-export certificates Appendix 2 species does not require any kind of import certificate by the sites. Let me explain to you by an example. So, for example, India is there and Australia is there. Okay. 
सो फॉर अपेंडिक्स वन स्पीसीज अपेंडिक्स वन स्पीसीज यू रिक्वायर बोथ इंपोर्ट एंड एक्सपोर्ट लाइसेंस एंड दे ट्रेड इज प्रोहिबिटेड इट इज ओनली अलाउड फॉर रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट एंड साइंटिफिक रिसर्च बट फॉर अपेंडिक्स टू स्पीसीज अपेंडिक्स टू स्पीसीज you do not require any kind of import license you only require export and re export license re export license so whenever our two countries are trading in appendix 2 species they do not require any import license but they do require export and re export licenses but this is also subject to the condition that yes it should not be detrimental to the status of the species in the wild now let us understand about the appendix 3 species so appendix 3 species is a list of species included at the request of a party that already regulates trade in the species and that needs the cooperation of other countries to prevent unsustainable or illegal exploitation and this is what exactly exactly is happening in the case of jaguar so the parties have agreed okay that yes we are going to stop the illegal a uh, trade and poaching of this animal known as the jaguar in uh, appendix 1 and appendix 2 the species are added to the list by the conference of parties or the cop but there is a difference in appendix 3 species appendix 3 species that the species in this list are added by the parties themselves and this is a major distinction between appendix 1 appendix 2 and appendix 3 species international trade in specimens of species listed in appendix 3 is allowed only on presentation of the appropriate permits or certificates so see no matter whatever the appendix may be the trade is definitely controlled and uh, regulated by the sites if you ask me an example of appendix 1 species it includes the gorillas the sea turtles and recently india has added two kinds of turtles in appendix 1 firstly is the red crowned roofed turtle and second is the leeds soft shell turtles examples of appendix 2 species includes penguins includes corals most of the corals are placed in the appendix 2 in fact most of the species in the sites convention is placed in the appendix 2 and appendix 3 as i have explained uh, the example can include the jaguar so all of these species are example of appendix 1 appendix 2 and appendix 3 species now let us examine the position of india in relation to the sites convention so india is one of the recognized mega diverse countries of the world harboring nearly 7 to 8% of the recorded species of the world and representing four of the 34 globally identified biodiversity hotspots so himalayas western ghats eastern ghats etc are the recognized biodiversity hotspots of india and most of the species of these uh, biodiversity hotspots are included in appendix 1 and appendix 2 of the sites okay india being a sites party actively prohibits the international trade of endangered wild species and several measures are in place to control threats from invasive alien species example certificates for exports permitted for imports etc so india plays an active role in uh, you know preserving those species which are endangered and recently india has also added two uh, turtle species as i have mentioned in the appendix one of the sites so definitely india is following sites india has ratified sites and india is monitoring closely and india is uh, stopping the international trade of those species which are endangered in nature recently india has also requested sites to remove rosewood from appendix 1 to appendix 2 so india does take 
an active part in protecting and preserving all of the endangered wildlife species as has been mandated by the CITES convention. With this, we come to a conclusion of our today's discussion. We have discussed the CITES convention. We have also discussed the working of the CITES convention and we have also seen that yes, India is a party to CITES and is working and closely monitoring the illegal trade of and poaching of the endangered wildlife species and India also makes timely recommendations to the sites. India has also hosted a COP related to the sites convention. Kindly let me know uh, the year of uh, hosting in the comment box below. But there are certain challenges to the sites convention also. The first challenge is that it is voluntary in nature, voluntarily in nature. So though it is legally binding, the voluntary uh, nature of the agreement nullifies the whole purpose of it being legally binding. Okay, Then there are other challenges as well which include that the countries can put the species from one appendix to another appendix. They can shift the species. So who is the decision making body? The COP. So whenever there is an issue, the countries are empowered to remove the species from appendix 1 and appendix 2 uh, and appendix 3 thereby reducing their protection status and ivory trade was prohibited ivory trade was prohibited but it has been allowed in the certain circumstances which also raises a question on the efficacy of the sites convention so all of these challenges are there but yes sites convention is a very important convention it is very important from your examination point of view and this convention helps in actually preserving the those wildlife species that are actually threatened you cannot easily have an international trade if the species is placed in appendix one of the sites and sites is a very important convention to preserve our biodiversity. Now let us examine a practice question for your prelims examination. So the question is consider the following statements. Your statement number one is it is an international treaty signed in 1974. Your statement number two is sites is administered by UNEP. Your statement number three is it protects wildlife from over exploitation. So which of the following statements given above is are correct? So your option A is 1 and 2 only. Option B is 2 and 3 only. Option C is 3 only and option D is 1, 2 and 3. Kindly drop your answers in the comment box below. Now let us analyze a practice question for your mains examination. I hope this session was insightful for you. If you have any feedback regarding this session, kindly drop it in the comment box below. If you liked the today's discussion and found it to be helpful, kindly like the video and subscribe to our channel for more such updates. Thank you.